Hey everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Got an interesting um, test that I did recently. Uh, a good shooter, Ventress shooter, uh, local guy here in the Pacific Northwest was chatting with me about uh, old lots of uh, N133 powder. Um, it's a powder we use, many, many Ventress shooters use up here for short range in the 6PPC uh, cartridge. And uh, pretty common for uh, people to sell powder, give away lots, or, you know, uh, unfortunately a shooter may pass away and then have an estate and there's lots of N133 powder and, you know, you look at the date on it and it it's, you know, 10, 20 years ago and you're wondering, hmm, I don't know, I mean, is this, you know, is, is this a good lot? I don't know, you know, but anyway, oftentimes people buy it and, you know, because, hey, it's, it's, powder it's hard to find and so let's grab it and give it a go anyway so uh, he had a, a, a lot of 2012 N133 um, I've been shooting the more recent lots I have uh, usually 2016 and above but this year I shot 2021 pretty new lot anyway he was wondering I wonder how it compares you know because I think um, with this older lot you know I kind of get heavy bolt lift with um, not a whole heck of a lot of powder in the case, you know, so maybe there's some difference in the new powder versus the old. And I said, all right, you know, we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll, we'll shoot some groups and, you know, take some velocity readings and other things and see if there's any difference between, uh, 2012 and 2021, uh, N133. Okay. So what I did was I took, um, my test rifle, which is my Bat Nouveau action, um, and my Brooks uh, test barrel and uh, loaded up my standard loads you know I use the same primer I sort my primers by weight um, you know same bullet seated the bullet in the same location for everyone um, varied the charge weights from 28.8 29 29.2 and 29.4 and I weighed 2021 loaded five of each of those and then um, empty the dispenser, put in the 2012, weighed those out, and put five shots of those in. Um, and what I did is I just drew a direct comparison. So this is 28.8, uh, 20 thousandths into the lands with this particular bullet with 2021 powder. And it shot really good. 28.8 seems to have been a good, good load there. Um, it's a .1625 five shot group. Um, the 28.8 of the 2012 was much larger, uh, 0.5055, and in fact it showed kind of a very similar pattern of much larger groups with the older N133, the 2012. Um, in fact, I think the group sizes were just about double with the older powder, even though it's the same weight charge. Same bullet, same primer, primer seated the same way, same type of brass weight sorted brass. Um, and so anyway, um, I went ahead and ran a statistical test to see, hey, is this, you know, difference I'm seeing here in group size, like a big deal? And it really was. The aggregate for the, the 2021 powder was 0 0.3178. Uh, the aggregate for the 2012 was 0 0.6021. So almost double the size. And when you have a massive effect like that, even with you know, a sample size of, you know, let's see, four times five, you got 20 shots here, 20 shots there, you know, four or five shot groups is really what you're comparing. Uh, even with a, a massive uh, effect size that big, it's going to be statistically significant, which it was, uh, it was, you know, significant. So um, just kind of on the face, it looks like, you know, 2021 just shot better than the 2012. Okay. Then I looked at velocity, I was a little interested in that, and um, it looks like the 2012 powder is the orange bar, 2021 is the blue. The 2021 just shot a little bit faster um, on average um, with the charge weights of 28, 8, 29, 29, 2, 29, 4. Um, usually, you know, anywhere from about 25 to 15 feet per second faster. Okay, and so um, definitely the newer uh, powder was going a little bit faster than the older. Okay, so I thought that was interesting. 
Um, I checked standard deviation also on those on those velocity readings, and the standard deviation was essentially the same from 2021 to 2022. Um, what I also did was um, I sort of compared the groups um, based on their velocity. So um, there's a lot of people that say, you know, well, there's an ideal velocity for <laughs> or a velocity node, whatever they call it where you'll get good precision if your velocity is within this range. Um, I've personally never seen that. Um, I've seen precision happen at, you know, tons of different velocity ranges and a number of different cartridges and bullets and et cetera. Um, never really seen an ideal velocity um, or some kind of, you know, no velocity node where precision is greater in, in a particular um, velocity range. Uh, and anyway, so um, when I yoked the uh, 2021 and 2022, where I compared the group size of the bullets that were traveling, you know, 3325 and 3332 feet per second, um, and then 3343, 3345, 3359, and 3360. So I basically took um, the ones from the 2021 and compared them to the 2012 based on their velocities which were essentially the same and the group sizes were still statistically larger uh in the 2012 group so uh so so even with sort of controlling for velocity and comparing directly comparing the same velocity set of groups uh the 2021 just shot better much better um, once again, never seen in, in actual uh, ideal velocity, um, and this data seems to suggest, you know, yes, there there is no ideal velocity, um, even if you know, it's, it's, it's the powder type, powder year, bullet you're shooting, you know, those are the important factors. Um, and if you look at the target, you can see, so this one going 33.25, this one going 33.32, you can see, even though they're about the same velocity, mass, much larger group in the 2012. Same thing here, much larger group, same thing here, um, much larger group in the 2012. So it was basically comparing those to see, is matching velocity gonna produce the same group size, which it doesn't. It just seems like the powder itself uh, just wasn't really performing well. Um, anyway, yeah, and I've, I've heard people say, you know, well, you're, you're upping and downing your, your powder charge to increase or decrease your velocity. And I always say, well, not, no, I, I, velocity to me is a, not even a variable. Um, we're not judged in our matches by our velocity. We're judged by precision. And when I go up or down on a powder charge, I do that uh, to make the load more precise. I, I don't care about velocity. I've never seen these velocity, uh, ideal velocities or velocity nodes or whatever you call them. Um, I'm really doing that for precision. And anyway, so this data suggests that, yeah, they're really, uh, once again, and I think all my data thus far has shown there really is no ideal velocity. Um, and then I looked at, um, you know, I thought, what could be producing the 20 feet per second difference in the 2012 and 2021 and um, I thought well let me throw by volume instead of weight and see if there's any uh, interesting findings when I throw by volume instead of weight and it turns out I, I took this thrower this is a, a Bryant thrower Mike Bryant uh, made this custom made uh, extremely reliable thrower, by the way. Um, definitely the best one I've had, and I've, I've had a couple. And uh, it, it meters really well. Um, it's usually only off by, you know, a tenth of a grain, um, and not off by a tenth of a grain much. Um, some of the old throwers that I used to have were off by up to, a, you know, four tenths of a grain, and they were frequently more than a tenth of a grain off almost all the time. Um, this one is extremely consistent, uh, and there's a couple things that I do to it to make it consistent, too. I make sure I keep a high powder column level, and I also do a special double tap where I go up once, down halfway, not let it dispense any, and then go up again to make sure I'm filling, filling that thing up all the way. And then I will slowly drop the powder down the tube into the case. Um, and so there's a couple things that I use to get better uniformity out of this. And I've tested it and I've found that, yes, if I keep the powder level high, 
and I do my double tap procedure, I get extremely good uniformity um, in terms of the uh, volume of the throws. And anyway, so I went ahead and threw 10 times. Oh, one of the other techniques, by the way, that I use is I, I'll throw the first three down because the first three always, for whatever reason, have a high degree of variability. So I'll throw three in there and dump them back in. And then after the third one, then I'll start my, my throwing. For whatever reason, the first three don't seem to uh, give me good reliability. But after that, I get extremely good reliability. I have no idea why, but um, that's the case. So I went ahead and threw the 2021 throws using the exact same setting on the thrower. I just set it right there and left it. I mean, I didn't even touch it. Just set it there for the 2021 and 2012, same exact setting. And it turns out that the 2021, um, the throws had more weight. I, I After I threw a throw, I went then and I put it on the same uh, weight uh, system that I was using to um, throw the charges for the tests. Um, so I was using the exact same scale. And it turns out that um, the throws were a little bit heavier than the 2012s. Uh, 29.3, 29.4 was around what it was throwing. On average, 29.35. 2012 threw, again, with the same setting and the same technique, um, an average of 29.17, which is a 0.18 difference. And that was statistically significant. Um, and so definitely had a statistically significant um, sort of uh, difference in what was being thrown um, out of the manual powder dispenser. Um, and certainly looking at that and it being 0.18 is almost a <laughs> perfect explanation for the you know, velocity uh, difference, which was about, you know, 20 feet per second on average, if you look at the velocity chart. So, um, so if, you know, we were able to, you know, if the volume through the same, I'm guessing that the velocities would be the exact same, but it didn't. Um, it turned out that the thrower threw heavier velocities for the newer powder and lighter uh, I'm sorry, heavier powder throws uh, um, than the than the 2012. And that could explain why there was a little bit of a velocity difference there across the board. Um, and so it seems like with 2021, uh, powder, you know, maybe is a little more dense or something like that and weighs a little bit more than the 2012. Maybe it's uh, some new additive they put in 133, I don't know. I mean, I haven't, you know, gone through and studied it a whole heck of a lot, but um, because uh, again, I'm more on the practical side with these tests and practically speaking, um, all this data collectively tells me, you know, tells me some things, you know, number one, um, the older powders, you know, are may not shoot the same. So you may have an, I oh, look, you know, 28.8 is a great shooting, um, is a great weight for, you know, my current new powder and it's doing great. I normally only have to vary that a little bit here and there, but it stays in tune well. Well, with if you get an older powder, don't expect the tune to maintain, you know, across the board. It may not, is kind of what I'm saying. So be, be careful when you switch lots of powder or, or you, you know, you're looking at a powder that's, you know, 11 years old and you're using something that's only one or two or three years old. Um, be careful. There may be a massive difference in precision. So that's the first thing. So um, caution statement there. Be careful. Um, second thing is if you're, you know, using a, a volumetric thrower like this one, uh, be ready. The older lot um, may not throw the same volume. So, you know, oftentimes at a match, I will hear people say, yeah, I'm running 58 clicks, you know, um, which is the how many, you know, clicks they run on the dial here for this is the volume dial. You turn it for for more or less volume. And so a lot of people will say clicks because they, you know, a lot of the powder volume powder throwers click when they, you know, change the volume uh, that goes into the hopper there. Um, so. Oftentimes, oh, I'm running 56 clicks. And so a lot of people will use that as kind of a uniform, you know, oh, if I run 56, I might do good. Well, if that person that you're talking to has a, a newer powder, a 2021, uh, and you're running 2012, well, the click values aren't necessarily going to be the same. You're going to have different a different volume come out. 
Um, so definitely, you know, be careful there. Also, if you, let's say, were running, let's say, a newer or an older powder in one of these, um, and let's say, you're, for example, you're running the older powder, your click value, you know, you're like, oh, well, I'll run 56, and then you go out and get, let's say, a, a new lot. Uh, 2021 2022 or whatever and you throw that in here and you might expect okay my 56 clicks should be about the same well no it's not um, the the density of the new powder may be um, significantly different than the density of the old powder and give you a different you know um, or maybe the same volume but a different overall charge weight which then you know drives your uh, velocity not necessarily your precision though again like I said um, velocity is not a predictor of precision, um, but just know that <laughs> when you're switching lots, you may get precision differences. Certainly here we got some pretty significant precision differences. So anyway, so those are just lessons to learn if you ever plan on using a thrower. Um, if you're looking at, you know, older lots of powder, um, definitely be aware of these things and be ready and prepared for them. Uh, what I did with this powder dispenser is, you know, I, I measured how much on average each setting on this dial here um, in it would, would equate to weight. And I did this with a new lot of powder. I think it was like 2018 or so. Um, now this may have to get revised if let's say I, I start shooting 2012 or 2010 or something like that. I get, I get into, you know, I get some older powder and I'm using that I'm I, this may not apply at that point so um, you know anyway so all lessons to learn and definitely something to keep in mind um, as you're you know shooting your um, precision rifles that different different powder years may perform differently in terms of precision and they may also have different characteristics in terms of uh, density uh, which will affect you know volumetric throwing um, and, uh, you know, ultimately something like velocity. So anyway, all right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we are preparing for another test here soon where we are going to be looking at uh, bullet concentricity. Uh, it is a topic that I have been interested in for a while, but um, uh, a really good bench rest shooter uh, out in the Midwest uh, uh, messaged me and said, hey, you know, I've always wondered about concentricity and I've been like, I have too. Uh, most of my tooling produces very little run out and very good concentricity, but um, I've always wondered how much is that a real factor. So what I'm gonna do is, um, you know, produce some bullets with very little run out, very good concentricity, and then um, produce some bullets with a little bit of greater run out. Um, and I'm try still trying to figure out how I'm going to create the run out because like I said, the bullets I produce now have very little. So I'm going to have to figure out some way to systemically uh, produce greater run out. But anyway, look forward to that test here in the near future. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.